yeah, I'm feeling adventurous today. So I thought I would put my hair extensions in, give that a try, try filming outside again, just for the fun of it. Okay, so you guys, 2020 is coming up. The end of a decade, the start of a new decade, and it's making me really emotional. I think partially because I have my period right now. I got my period back postpartum for the first time. It's not so fun. <laughs> But in all seriousness, 2020 is just going to be such a good year for us. And like the start of a decade, like thinking about where my life will be at the end of 2020, I'll be closer to 40. <laughs> my kids will be so grown. One chapter ending, another chapter beginning in like so many ways for our family. I think I've talked about it in other videos, but like a new year always is very like sentimental for me because it's also my birthday at the beginning of January. So it's just like a new year of life for me, a new year for everyone. This start of 2020 like cj will be working in his career like no more school we'll be getting into our own house our lives are like really going to be beginning and i i just can't wait to see what 2020 and this whole decade holds for us like who knows what opportunities are going to come our way what doors will open up what doors will close what things will say goodbye to and will we have more kids will we not like the future is just wide open so that's kind of my theme of this video today I want to go back to talking about what this past decade has been like for me and what it means for you. So let's go back to 2010. When the year 2010 started, I was a junior in high school. So I graduated high school in 2011. January 2010, I was 17 years old. I had my driver's license. I was working at McDonald's. I was just so wrapped up in music and my boyfriend. But I knew that like big things were coming, going to college. That was like a big scary thing coming up and I was so young but I felt like my whole world everything that would affect my entire future was happening right at that time if I was gonna stay with my boyfriend that probably meant I would never get married in the temple if I was gonna stay in New York and go to music school with him like I was planning on if I was gonna go to BYU I found out in February of 2010 that I got into BYU. That changed a huge trajectory of my life. I felt like I knew what I wanted. I knew that I loved families. I knew that I loved music. I knew that I wanted to be a wife and a mother one day. I knew that I loved the gospel, but I was also, you know, stuck in a hard place because of my boyfriend not being a member of the church. And a lot of stuff happened in the couple of years after that. From the time of 2010 to 2015, I went through a lot of things. Okay, there's an airplane. Graduated high school, went to BYU, got my heart broken a couple times by my high school boyfriend and then my boyfriend I had at the end of college. I went through a faith crisis. I moved to Arizona. So many things happened in that five year time period, which is like to be expected, right? Graduating from high school, going to college, graduating from college, like those are big deal things. You would expect like a lot of crazy things to happen in life. But then from 2015 to now, even more crazy things happen. So let's just talk about one year. Okay, we know 10 years is a, is a huge time period. Let's just talk about one year. So I went on Instagram and I was doing the 10 year challenge, posting pictures from every year. So what I did was I posted pictures from every six months. I would post a picture from like December, or January, and then like June, July. They were really silly, pretty goofy to look back on. You know, bad eyebrows and bad makeup. Most of you guys know my story if you've read my book if you've watched my videos like you know 2014 2015 how crazy it was so let me let me just tell you about it okay my hope is that it, it will give you hope no you know what let's just let's just talk about all of 2015 okay we're not even going to go into 2014 backstory 2014 was the year that I started dating non-members fell in love thought I was gonna get married had some big questions about the church decided to leave the church, graduated, and moved to Arizona. So when 2015 started, it was my 22nd birthday. I was in a new state, didn't have any friends, didn't have a job. I was super insecure, super lost in like where I was, like what I wanted, what I believed, my values. I spent my 22nd birthday sitting in my bed, eating Panda Express, Doritos and Ben and & Jerry's and watching You've Got Mail. It was not a good birthday. I cried literally the whole day. It rained 
on my birthday. And I think it was that Sunday after my birthday that I decided to go to church. I felt the spirit so strongly, but I was like, no, I don't want this. It's too confusing. It's too conflicting for me. I don't want to be a part of this church that like is just ripping my heart in a million pieces because of all the questions and issues I had with it. I was not making good decisions. I was not happy. I was just like lost in every way that a person could be. No friends, no family, no job, no school. Like emotional, spiritual crisis, just such a bad place. Then you know it was in March that I started to realize I needed to come back to church. So it had only been three months and I knew that I wanted to go meet with the bishop and repent and come back to the church. So that's a lot to happen in just three months to realize that it is what I want and to decide to go back to church and change my life. I also started beauty school, which was a path that I was never planning on going down at all. So that gave me purpose. And then I met CJ shortly after that. And then a couple months after that, I got engaged. So by July of 2015, halfway through the year, I had started beauty school. I had come back to church. I had lost like, hmm, 10 pounds. I was engaged, planning a wedding, preparing for the temple. That's a lot of change. Then by October, I had gone to the temple. I was endowed. I was sealed. I had made all these covenants with God, learned so many things about the gospel, had so many questions answered, learned so many things. I was on like a spiritual high. Then by December, ending the year 2015, I was pregnant with my daughter. Like, can we just do you realize how my world completely flipped around in one year? Everything that could possibly change about me had changed. My whole just like day-to-day -day lifestyle. I was going to work, working full-time as, as a manager in a salon. I was healthy, eating healthy. I was active. I was fit. I lost a lot of weight. I was blonde. <laughs> you know, still am. I'll be blonde forever. I was married. I had a baby growing in my belly, active in the church, living in Arizona. Like no one when the year 2015 started could have predicted the way my year would end. And that's like, that's just the thing about life is that, and that's the, the thing that I want people to understand from like my story and my life is whatever place you're in, whatever trial you're going through, whatever heartache you're dealing with, whatever questions and doubts and concerns you have, I don't care what it is, it can all change. My takeaway message is that God is involved in the details of your life, every tiny thing. There are so many things that have happened that I, I can't talk about right now. I alluded to some of it on Instagram a couple weeks ago, talking about how I have never in my entire life seen prayer and fasting work so quickly to just absolutely change lives. So whatever thing it is that you're going through, that you're dealing with, trial, a struggle, a tragedy, a heartbreak, it can change and get better. That doesn't mean it's going to happen as immediately, but God is there and there is a plan for you. I know it's so hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. It is so hard to hold on to hope sometimes and think, how is this possibly going to get better? When is it ever going to get better? When is it ever going to end? There's a girl I follow on Instagram and her little one-year-old baby has cancer. He was diagnosed at like two months old and Right when they see that things are maybe starting to get better, he's maybe making a little progress, they take a few steps back. And I'm sure she feels like it's never going to end. I'm sure that it, she can't even possibly imagine a time when she's not basically living in the hospital when all these tubes aren't coming out of her baby. I know it's so hard to hold on to hope, to believe in the light at the end of the tunnel. You just feel trapped and like, how is it ever gonna get better? How am I ever gonna have the things I want? How am I ever gonna get my questions answered? Maybe you think there are no answers. Maybe you think there is no hope, there is no light. But I know that there is, and I'm not just talking about, I was single and I was sad that I was single and then I got married and so I was happy. It's all the little things in between then. The discomfort I felt with myself, not knowing who I was, and that changed. Not knowing if I would ever get the things I wanted, and that changed. Not having a plan, a path, direction, and that changed. My questions about the gospel, that changed. Literally every way a person could possibly change, I changed. But yet, while still being myself and learning even more about myself and improving who I really was, like if anything, I just discovered more and became more of who I was meant to be. So I would challenge you to reflect back on the past 10 years of your life and all the things 
that have changed and have worked out for your good. I know that there's a song that's like, thank God for unanswered prayers. And that's just, it's so true. If we had gotten the things that we wanted when we wanted it, we probably wouldn't be where we are now, or we wouldn't end up where we're meant to be. Maybe right now you're praying for an answer, you're hoping something will change. You're wanting something and it's not happening. Maybe it's not for a reason. And maybe it will benefit you one year from now, six months from now, three months from now, 10 years from now. Time is an amazing and scary thing. It was so exciting. And we're so blessed that God is involved in the details of our lives and that he loves us and he is watching over us and watching out for us and preparing us for greater things. Believe in the light at the end of the tunnel. It is there. Don't give up hope. Hold on to that light, knowing that things can change and things can get better. Please take it from me. I'm so excited for 2020. I can't wait to share so many things with you guys. Thank you for being part of my life for the past couple of years. You have changed my life in so many ways, so many opportunities that I never would have expected. I never would have thought I would have a YouTube channel or have a book or have any sort of following of people who I've helped them or who look up to me. It's like the craziest, coolest thing that I never would have expected. So thank you so much. See you in my next video.